I call this the Jay Leno starter kit. So he says basically, hey man, you know, if you like cars, you can invest in them. And when you sell them, if you sell them, you'll make money on them, but you get to enjoy your investment. It's like Bitcoin you can drive. Hello, my name is Gabriel Iglesias. That's uh, Iglesias if you have an accent or Iglesias if you don't. We are here at my compound in beautiful Long Beach, California. This is basically a glorified man cave. I call it a one bedroom, 80 car garage. It's a big glorified multi-purpose room. My first car was a 1968 Volkswagen bus that my brother helped to get me. Uh, probably cost about 400 bucks at the time. I wanna say it was like 16, 17. I had the car for a couple years. I pushed it, I drove it, I ran out of gas in it. I mean, none of the gauges worked. I knew how fast I was going if I was next to another car and I could see their speedometer. I'd ask the guy at the light, how fast were you going? Okay, cool, now I know I can go 30. It was my first car and you always fall in love with your first car. And so uh, years later, uh, when I was, I was hanging out with Jay Leno, Jay's guys, his car, his car guys, he's got guys, he knows people. They said, hey, if you're ever looking for a car in particular, let us know and we'll see what we can do for you. They called me the next day and they had a bus. And I was like, wow. And then they said, if you want anything else, let me know. And I said, well, if you come across something, let me know. And they called me the next day. And so basically we were playing this game back and forth for about a year and it took a little under a year to collect all these buses. All right, this is the one that started it all. This is a 1968 Volkswagen Bay Window bus. My original bus looked like this in my dreams. It was actually gray and white, uh, but did not look like this. This is the car that I wanted to get back. It's very different and the design inside, it's a lot more, um, a lot more fluffy friendly, if you will. My first car was a 1968 Bay Window, which is different than these. These are all split windows and mine has the full windshield. The seats are, are back just a little bit more and it handles a little bit better than the, uh, let's say, the split window. That's a 1956 next to a 1968. So clearly you could see the evolution there. This is the Iron Man bus. The color scheme on it is very different than buses that are out there. It's very, very custom. If Iron Man got converted into a Volkswagen bus, that's what it would look like. A little homage to uh, Mr. Tony Stark. As you could tell the height difference, uh, this is the standard height right here. And then this is the uh, lowered, you know, people say, oh, why'd you mess it up? You lowered it. It looks cool. And I got a couple others that are the right height. So hit all you want. Buses back in the day didn't exactly have this much chrome on them. I kind of went a little chrome happy. So anywhere I could put chrome, chrome that's mexican in me what anyway the wheels are porsche alloys back in the day there was no options for volkswagens you you pretty much had to just go with porsche parts if you had porsche alloys on your car you were doing something right that was your like ooh. but now there's like a million different kinds of wheels you could put on your car but back in the day porsche alloys only way to go and yes the porsche logo is on there because yeah you got the bay window back in the day because that's what you could afford. The split windows are the price difference is huge. So for example, a 1967 in this condition, probably at one of those auctions will go from anywhere from 100 to $150,000. Whereas a bay window one year later, you can get for about 25K. They made more, more cartoons and more things with the, the bay window look versus the split window, but these are un unmistakable. There's nothing that looks like them. All right, behind me is a 1967 camper. It originally started off white and we decided to kind of have some fun with it. These are like very much in the vein of the Bentley colors. We wanted to have something to give it a little bit more class, a little more style, make it, you know, a little nicer. It was just plain white. I bought it from a guy in Germany who bought it from a guy in California. So this bus started off in California, went to Germany and then came back to California. This is a straight up camper. This was meant for outings and don't get me wrong, I'm sure you could live in the other ones too, but this one actually has a bed in the back. It's got, you know, wood cabinets. The original one had a, a little baby stove in it and a little cooler. I had it taken out because it's, yeah, I ain't gonna make no grilled cheese in there. I got a Foreman grill. It's got curtains and it's it's actually really, really comfortable. I wanted to make sure that if I, if I redid the camper, that it had enough power to go up if I ever wanted to take it to Big Bear. So uh, it's ready to go. How does it make me feel to drive a Volkswagen bus? Well, first of all, you're up really high. These were out before SUVs. Anytime you get an SUV, you always feel above and you can see down on everybody. And kind of the same thing. You get one of these, you're cruising. You have no blind spots in these things, so you can see everything. It's all coming at you right there. There's no hood. So uh, unfortunately, if you hit something, you have about two inches of metal between you and whatever you hit. The question was asked by Jay Leno. Why so many of the same car? He goes, it's boring. You're buying the same car. It's the same car, same car, same car, same car. And I'm like, Jay, I go, when people see these now, now it's kind of like a brand association thing. They're always sending me pictures of buses and hey, look at this one. My cousin's selling one. And so they know me now 
as the bus guy. It's really cool that I've associated myself with such an iconic thing. I am standing here right in front of this beautiful 1959 23 window bus. I got this bus about three years ago. The guy who does all my restorations, he showed up here one day in this car and uh, he left walking because I bought it off of him that day. Yeah, it was already pimped out. It was good to go. And I think he did that on purpose. Pretty sure he did that on purpose. The biggest difference between this 1959 and this one next to me is a 1967. They look very similar, but uh, as you could tell, the turn signal lights. One is flat, looks like an egg. The other one kind of has like a little nipple. I don't know if I can say nipple on GQ, but yeah, I don't know whose nipple, but somebody's nipple, that's what it looks like. So uh, most of my buses have uh, roof racks and that's, that's an accessory, it's an option. I just thought it looked cool. You know, I don't really put stuff up there, but it just, you can. It's earrings, pimped out earrings. They're really pretty. Not, not so much practical, but pretty. The trucks were made for, you know, just like now. Someone goes out and buys an F-150. They gotta work, they got things to do. They did not look like that back in the day. Uh, I had chrome put all over them. They probably did not have chrome back in the day when they were being used for work. There's a lot of uh, compartments in there. So, you know, you, you stick your tools. You, it's, they're, they're working trucks. When I got them, uh, they, were, they, were, they were being used for work, so I, I had to clean them up a lot. This truck right here, it's a single cab, and uh, when I first got it, I got catfished. This is why I tell people, you gotta go see the cars for yourselves. Make sure you take someone with you so you can get a second pair of eyes if you're gonna invest a lot of money into one of these. I bought this thing, it was a mess. It was crooked. It was, it was, it was more crooked than my last account. This, this thing was just bent. It was all messed up. Like the whole body was tweaked out and then they, uh, they used a lot of filters in the photos. And I'm like, this is a great deal. And then and the guy goes, you know, you don't gotta do much to it. Okay, okay. And once the check cleared, yeah, apparently I did. I had to basically put, you know, three times the amount into that truck to straighten the body and then paint it and then make it look the way that it does. The beauty of it is that it actually runs really well now. It handles great. It doesn't just look pretty. It is pretty. This rack right here, it, <laughs> it actually was uh, covered up. It looks kind of like a tent. It reminds me of those old school uh, movies where they show the guys in Vietnam and everybody's in the back and it's just covered up. I had it taken off because it wasn't, it didn't look pretty. So I, I, you know, I just left it like this and it just, gave it a little style. Put some wood on it, paint it black, it's nice. All right, well this one, it's a little bit easier to see. It has a, a little bit of a rag top on it. Okay, this one doesn't. It was an option back then and, and this one had one. So yeah, it's kind of cool. You could open it up, you could stand up in it. You have a bunch of people in the car, one of them kind of smells a little, you open up your rag top, air it out. It's a beautiful thing. Who drives a Volkswagen bus? Someone who just, likes to smile and have fun. Like if you're behind the wheel of one of these buses and you're like, like you gotta, ugh, you're making faces and you look like you're mad, then life just did not work out for you. And no matter what you do, you're not gonna be happy unless it broke, you know, broke down and then you gotta push it, then you can make that face. But when you're driving one of these, you just, it feels good. You pop open the windows in the front, the air hits your face. It's just, you know, you're smiling. It's, it, it's, it's great, it's a great feeling. All right, let me show you a little something here. The windows pop out. Uh. So if you're going about 15 miles an hour, that's, that's pretty awesome right there. People think it's just gonna putt putt, but no, that, that'll, you'll pass people. But you gotta be careful too, because you're very top heavy. Yeah. So, you know, you gotta remember that. It, it's not made to go that fast. So the fish tanks got made uh, by a uh, television show called Tanked. So they showed up here and they're like, hey man, we heard you like Volkswagen buses. What do you think of if we make you a, a you know, fish tank out of a bus? To take a bus and cut it in half and convert them into a fish tank, like Volkswagen people saw that and they're like cringing because these are masterpieces. However, the bus that we got came from Brazil and Brazilian buses are known as Frankenstein buses because they take different years and put a bus together. So like they'll use the front end of a 67 and the rear end of a 73 and just put them together. And so those buses were not as valuable as the other ones. And so we were able to get one really, really cheap. They chopped it and that's what you see right there. This started off as just like, it's cool to have one or two, but then I was obsessed with filling the space and then putting up all the artwork on the walls and then just making it look cool. And at one point I go, I got a little museum here. And then I actually painted on the wall that it's a museum. The mural in the background is uh, the Wolfsburg plant in uh, Wolfsburg, Germany. But that was the original one right there. And I had the pleasure of visiting uh, that plant, which is still there, looks just like that. The idea for the travel posters, uh, basically it's a lot of the places that I've performed. 
Clearly I haven't driven the buses there, but since it's a museum and I'm trying to make it part of a thing, each one is a different place that I've performed or I plan on performing. So like for example, I've done shows in, in Dubai, Kuala Lumpur, Montreal, uh, I've been in Paris, uh, Oslo, Norway, Mexico. Uh, haven't been to Medellin, uh, Colombia, but I'm working on it. Pablo Escobar is in the back of that truck. I, you know, I was having a little fun, I was bored. So I told the artists if they could put Pablo Escobar in the back of the, uh, the truck, because they were always sneaking him around back in the day. Got some special cargo on top. Special cargo, yeah. <laughs> Glad you noticed. This collection alone has drawn people from all over the world to come down to want to see it, document it, and take pictures and just, you know, talk about it and, and, and feature it. I managed to make my own little Mexican Graceland here between the Volkswagens and all my memorabilia, so it's, it's pretty cool.